Friends, friends, come over here. If you look up there, way, way up there, get your binoculars out. Off into the distance, you might just see, if you focus in just enough, you might just see Barack Obama sitting on his high horse, attacking progressives as he looks down upon us. That's right, people. Barack Obama is back. And unsurprising to basically everybody, Barack Obama is back to attacking not neoliberals and not neoconservatives, but progressives. So he just went to an event in Berlin. Uh, And I want to read to you this article or at least part of the article, and then I want to talk about it a little bit before we get started. Of course, I want to make sure that you all donate to Tulsi Gabbard's campaign. You can do so by clicking on the link in the description. Um, actually, this link will be in the comment section. It'll be pinned to the top in the comment section. It's less than 3,000 donations away. So make sure she gets on that debate stage. Um, so in the article by The Independent, they reported that Barack Obama has urged progressives in the U.S., to avoid becoming part of a circular firing squad. Got to be us, right? It has to be us. And he claimed that this circular firing squad takes aim at people who do not share all of our views. Okay. And what will be interpreted as a comment about the nature of the rivalry between different factions within the Democratic Party? The former vice, the former president, excuse me, Stress the need for for compromise. Well, let's be honest, everybody. If anyone has the particular type of experience to discuss unwavering compromise, it would be Barack Hussein Obama. I mean, he compromised with the neoliberals. He compromised with the neoconservatives. He compromised with Democrats and Republicans. He mostly compromises with Republicans, actually. He compromises with Big Pharma. He compromises with the big insurance companies. He compromised with Wall Street. Interestingly enough, it feels like the only people that Barack Obama doesn't want to compromise with is us, you know, the people that he's supposed to be the president of. I don't know if that's... The only, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way. But... uh I mean, you even compromise with police forces. You militarize the police. You compromise with everybody but people, but the actual citizens you're supposed to be in office to represent. So, I mean, like I said, I guess Barack Obama would be the perfect person to tell us how important it is to compromise. Anyway, he goes on to say, the way we structure democracy requires you take into account people who don't agree with you. He said this at an event in Berlin hosted by the Obama Foundation. And that, by definition, means you're not going to get 100% of what you want. According to The Hill, he then added, one of the things I do worry about sometimes amongst progressives in the United States is a certain kind of rigidity, uh, a rigidity um, where we say, uh, I'm sorry, this is not how it's going to be. And then we start sometimes creating what's called a circular firing squad, where you start shooting at your allies because one of them has strayed away from the from purity on the issues. And when that happens, typically the overall effort of the movement is weakened. Uh, I got, you know, just a question for Barack Obama. Whose movement are you talking about? You're not part of our movement. You are a neoliberal. You bombed more countries than any other president in history. And until Trump came into office, you deported more immigrants than any president in history. And then you also, I mean, just completely betrayed the Sioux tribe uh, and really Native Americans and their community as a whole. By not only having, I mean, just total silence on Standing Rock, but you at one point pretended to be their ally as you watched their grounds get trampled over after you watch, as you watched a treaty get completely violated. And this man has the, the nerve to say, oh, 
it's the movement. You're hurting the movement by making sure neoliberals don't get in bed with the very neoconservative slash GOP that they're supposedly against. I'm really confused by this. Because that's basically all progressives do, right? I mean, unless I'm crazy, that's basically what we do. We say, hey, neoliberals, can you not vote with neoconservatives? I don't, is that controversial? Like, I don't know. Maybe people consider me to be a controversial person. I don't like to think that I'm that controversial. I mean, I've been known to be somewhat of a loose cannon at times, but all I ask is for people to not bolster neoconservative policies. I don't think that that's a, like me, is me saying, hey, can you not support regime change in Venezuela or in Syria or in every other country, considering every example of regime change that we've been involved in has been a complete and utter failure? Is that controversial of me to say, despite having all the facts in front of us? Barack is not that damn slow. He's not. He knows better. But when you say things like this, it gaslights the rest of not only the Democratic Party, but those who are aspiring to be outside of that duopoly that is the Democratic and Republican Party. And they're not only people aspiring to be outside of that here, but I mean, even though there are multiple parties in various countries abroad, especially in Europe, it doesn't mean that they're not owned by the same people. This is one of the reasons why I tell people all the time, party politics is not the answer. You have to find an ideology and you stick to it. I mean, as long as it's a fact-based ideology, you can be malleable, but don't be a punk. <laughs> don't, the moment that some, a better monet- financial opportunity you know, creeps up, you just completely betray your ideology to support whoever the next best candidate is or the most popular candidate is. But they, there is multiple parties. There are multiple parties overseas, but... They're part of that duopolist system as well. Like they are a duopoly even though they have multiple parties because of the money involved. It's way more fair than here, admittedly enough. However, there is a constant battle to try and make it less fair in Europe um, and make it more like an oligarchy similar to the United States because Europe is um, integral. It's integral in our, in our plans to basically colonize the entire world. Um, and we are, if you haven't noticed, that's basically been our plan for quite some time. So I don't like to consider myself controversial. I feel like discussing facts and logic and reasoning isn't the same thing as a circular firing squad. What's, what's interesting to me is I was looking through these comments and I could be wrong because I, I might've missed it. I might've overlooked it. I might've misheard him. A lot of critiques for the progressives of the community. What a surprise. Question, everybody. How many critiques did you hear of the neoliberals or the Democratic establishment who cheated Bernie Sanders? I mean, it's out of curiosity. How many critiques did you hear of Debbie Washington Schultz cheating and getting caught? How many, crit- how many suggestions from Barack Obama did you... Let's make sure that our electoral process is fair. Let's make sure that we can have accountability in our election system. Let's make sure that we are taking every measure necessary to ensure that election fraud is not practiced at the primary level, just like we don't want it practiced at the general election level. Any suggestions there? Mm, I might have missed it, but I didn't hear any. I'm so tired of people talking about a purity test. I don't understand what is so pure about, oh, the environment is probably going to die and we're going to go with it. So let's at least pretend like we want to be on, on the planet alive. Is that, that's controversial? I don't, that's a purity test? Wanting to stay alive? Medicare for all. Can I just make sure that my family or no member of my family or my friends don't die of cancer for no other reason outside of the fact that they literally could not afford to go to a checkup to figure out that they had cancer. Like, is that, is that a purity test? 
because I'm beginning to get confused. I don't even know what purity is anymore. Wanting to be alive, wanting the planet to survive is a purity test. Wanting to not have oil leaked into our waterways where we have to consume the water or fish that people eat live in this water. I mean, that's a purity test. Ah, oh, man, I just look, dog. I don't, I don't know anymore. I'm, I don't, I don't know. They, there are words that are being constantly thrown out there by neoliberals, and I'm le- genuinely confused as to what any of them mean anymore. I didn't know that basic survival instincts are the same as a purity test. And if you say, hey, can we have Medicare for all? That's like holding a gun to someone during a firing squad. Really? Oh, my God. Hot damn Bojangles. Barack Obama, just sit your ass down somewhere. Stop talking. It is beginning to be a little bit troubling and bothersome that you keep wanting to interject unnecessarily with stupid comments like this. Blame your people. Don't blame ours. Blame the people who are trying to destroy the planet, not trying to save it. That just makes a little bit more sense to me. Who, what do I know, though? What do I know? I'm sure Barack Obama has done a fantastic job in the last eight years. Compromising. That's exactly why the country and the world in general is doing so well. Because of all of Barack Obama's compromises. Thanks for watching that segment of Mikasa Says Sukasa. Don't forget to join us on Roku and catch our Roku exclusives. Also, help us reach our goal of 500 patrons on Patreon. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and JustInform.com. But more than anything else, always remember, find your balance. Peace.